Earlier this week, during a very thrilling cricket match between India and Pakistan, the leading OTT platform Hotstar recorded a, a you know a traffic of more than 10.3 million concurrent users. That's more than 1.3 crore viewers uh, watching this match at the same time. Of course, without bringing the system down. Now, how could Hotstar build such a reliable system? I'm going to talk about in this video some of the key practices and technologies that Hotstar has been implementing purely from the DevOps perspective, which has helped them build uh, such uh, a scalable system. So let's get started with that. Before I begin, a full disclosure. I have nothing to do with Hotstar. All the information obtained uh, here uh, is from certain uh, official blog posts uh, from Hotstar, uh, written by the Hotstar team, uh, specifically by Kaushik Chandrasekhar, and a great talk by a cloud architect at Hotstar by name Gaurav Kamboj, uh, who talks about scaling Hotstar. Uh, all the relevant links from the original sources uh, would be available um, in the description below if you're watching this on the YouTube. Now, let's get on to the technology part. Let's first look at some stats which talk about the scale at which the Hotstar, uh, Disney Hotstar now operates. So Hotstar has received more than 400 million downloads and uh, it has uh, approximately 300 million users a month who are active and every day there are about 100 million users who are active on the platform and that's just amazing fascinating set of numbers and uh, that uh, you know uh, tells us about the scale and uh, when i say 10 million uh, plus you know you concurrent users this week uh, that's not even a record hotstar has set a global record that's a global record of uh, 25.3 actually uh, million uh, concurrent users in 2019 during uh, a cricket world cup match and uh, the next uh, you know next uh, highest number the scale in terms of scale is about 8 million uh, by youtube in uh, somewhere in 2000 so it's about 10 years uh, before this record was set right so uh, that is a global record by the way and uh, that's a proud moment for anyone who is indian because it's um, built by um, this company and the team and the infrastructure is primarily built by um, you know the indian engineers uh, that's a proud moment for me for sure now let's get on to the technology and uh, what are the technologies that hotstar is using in order to enable this kind of a scale first of all uh, they have been using cloud and primarily it is aws cloud and uh, AWS still stands as uh, the number one cloud in terms of the usage, in terms of uh, the startups uh, who are adopting to it and so on. And uh, some of the key, um, you know, services from AWS uh, would include, of course, EC2, uh, S3 as a storage, uh, load balancing, VPC becomes like the fundamental technology for enabler for, uh, for everything. Uh, what I know from the uh, articles that I've read, um, Hotstar also uses the EMR, which is the managed Hadoop services to consume uh, the data and uh, run their analytics uh, platforms on. And uh, the second technology which has enabled uh, this kind of a scale for Hotstar specifically is the containers, mainly Kubernetes. I'll be talking about cloud, I'll be talking about containers and the auto scaling and the container part of that as well. And the third key part uh, in this picture is the content delivery network. In case of Hotstar, it uses Akamai as the content delivery. So that's something to note about because AWS also has uh, a content delivery network called as CloudFront. But, um, you know, um, uh, Hotstar seems to be using um, Akamai, which is an external uh, service to AWS. Uh, rest of their infrastructure is uh, hosted on AWS, it looks like. But uh, content delivery wise, they are using Akamai. Something to note about because, uh, you know, there could be some specific reasons why you would want to choose uh, an external content delivery network. We know that Akamai is a very, very good content delivery network, probably the number one in the world. Uh, and there could be specific reasons in terms of uh, the users and the uh, content delivery network itself in terms of the uh, locations, edge locations, the pop locations that uh, are part of the CDN. 
now in terms of the scale how are they handle uh, how handling this kind of a scale is there has to be some sort of a auto scaling system here however uh, if you hear uh, Gaurav Kambosh talk about uh, the scaling policies they have built their own custom uh, settings and he also talks about some limitations of auto scaling itself uh, at least when um, you know uh, when that particular talk was recorded uh, at that time you could only create one kind of an instance with auto scaling group if that instance is not not available um, you would be in trouble uh, and uh, there were limitations in terms of the capacity between availability zones and uh, you know certain other restrictions and uh, issues that you typically see at scale so it is really important to hear these talks because you start understanding the problems that you would encounter at scale and how people actually solve it and this is a unique problem because uh, when they had uh, it, uh, this problem of scaling there was no other uh, use case they could uh, borrow the you know the uh, knowledge from uh, and Hotstar now gives us that use case to borrow the knowledge uh, from and understand how we can design our systems at scale and build it to reliability. So in lieu of uh, uh, or in addition to the auto scaling that AWS offers, uh, they created the custom scaling policies. And this is based on two th different things. One is traffic based and second is the ladder based. Now, um, uh, you know, uh, if you hear that talk, uh, Gaurav Kamboj, uh, he also talks about, um, you know, um, specifically, you know, uh, not using CPU utilization as uh, the scaling policy, which is which is available by default, but it's not the best uh, policy to use anyways. And this is even from my experience, uh, I have uh, mostly used uh, policies based around latency and the number of requests. And this is matching uh, what Hotstar does as well. And they have traffic based policies, which is based on the number number of uh, requests per second, the request count as, the, as we call it. So RPS is request per second and that is the number of requests uh, coming in and you can divide it by the number of instances and uh, come up with a capacity for per instance as well. That's something I, uh, the strategy that I follow personally uh, for auto scaling. and. Uh, um, it can also be in case of Hotstar, the user concurrency because for them it becomes a very useful metric. Um, because that tells them how many instances, how many servers that they need when they have uh, X number of concurrent users. And that number is typically in millions. So, uh, you know, 1 million users need these many instances, 3 million uh, users need these many instances. So basically they have these, multi you can add multiple policies uh, for scaling and they typically do pre-warming of the instances. So they, they'll uh, provision the instances in advance uh, and then they'll also use the traffic based policy to scale it and uh, you know uh, scale it dynamically right now uh, they also have this ladder based policy that they talk about which is more of uh, the number of concurrent users and uh, number of instances which are required so they would have benchmarked it they would have done some performance analysis and based on that they would have come up with this number and they use a buffer of i believe 2 million users meaning uh, when they decide to scale especially during certain events uh, they want to keep a buffer because it takes time for the instances to be added uh, to the pool and uh, to, to be ready and so on earlier they were relying on purely ec2 based uh, scaling until I believe uh, sometime in 2018 onwards when they moved to containers and containers is the next big thing you know uh, that they implemented which has helped them uh, manage this kind of a scale for sure. Uh, so they have this ladder based policy where for 3 million they'll provision 15 um, instances or something similar to that 5 million would be 25 and for every step um, of in the number of requests they would typically provision those many instances and keep them available uh, to support that scale. Uh, the second problem that they had was uh, instance uh, not scaling up uh, uh, in time and that is why they uh, you know went against uh, just you know just uh, the auto scaling policies and created their own custom policies and pre-warming of the instances etc. Uh, but containers seem to have solved their problems and container is a big thing here and the reason why you should be using considering containers you could definitely learn from the hot star uh, as a use case as well because uh, one thing is it can help you uh, scale very fast and uh, in general provisioning the instances very fast be because earlier they used to scale by using EC2 instances and they were not even using any automation configuration management tool to configure anything at the provisioning time everything was pre-baked pre-installed and uh, even then it used to take time to scale 
uh, Kubernetes allows for faster provisioning for sure because it's containers containers come up within seconds It's milliseconds time to launch the container and for the application to be ready. It might be few more seconds So now they've gone from minutes uh, to seconds um, in terms of uh, bringing up the new capacity and that's just fascinating uh, feature of uh, using a system such as Kubernetes uh, Do remember though uh, you still need the underlying nodes to scale and there they might still have these policies uh, based on traffic based on the ladder uh, or AWS has a service which will help you auto scale um, you know uh, the underlying nodes as well but I would uh, like to think that they might have their own policies to scale the underlying nodes for the Kubernetes itself because Kubernetes cannot uh, just create in containers out of thin air it also needs some instances and when they talk about this capacity and instances these are really large instances like C4, 4x large, C4 um, you know, uh, 8x large and C5, 9x large, which have like, you know, uh, tens of CPUs. Like so in some cases, there are um, uh, 30 CPUs, 60 CPUs and, you know, um, 70, 80 gigs of RAM on just one machine and uh, so on. So that is the scale uh, we are talking about. And uh, 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 containers offer you standardization, not only in terms of, um, you know, your application um, you know how it is delivered also how you set up your uh, logs and monitoring and uh, your ci cd process everything can be standardized and uh, um, hotstar specifically talks about uh, containers you know powering their request based scaling which was difficult for them to achieve earlier with pure ec2 now they could do the request based scaling very well with kubernetes and it's fast so they can use and leverage the auto scaling features and optimize the uh, cost as well as the capacity uh, requirements performance as well and uh, they have less go to production time because uh, you can standardize everything uh, that your delivery your CI/CD, and uh, so on uh, with containers and this is where they also talk about certain additional um, technologies which are being used uh, which includes go cd for as a platform for ci cd the delivery deployments continuous integration as well uh, so from um, the time the code get comes in and gets checked in to till it goes to production uh, these are uh, you know this is the platform that they use specifically uh, which is some something similar to um, you know open source version of equivalent of this could be Jenkins and maybe maybe an, another additional uh, deployment tool possibly also they use vault uh, for the secrets management credentials management terraform for infrastructure provisioning and uh, this comes this brings us to the skills which are required if you want to you know be part of a team uh, which handles and builds and manages uh, such kind of a fascinating reliable um, scalable system uh, what other things you must know about right so you must know about the cloud and you should be very very good at that uh, you should know about containers because containers is the way um, uh, for the future it's not even future it's present so if you don't know about containers it's just matter of uh, when you want to get started with it right so there is no option uh, between uh, learning and not learning containers anymore so containers specifically kubernetes and uh, you can get started with docker uh, for development with containers and uh, you can then move on to kubernetes kubernetes is the uh, technology to uh, definitely definitely learn uh, today and uh, content delivery network uh, is something that um, is used very widely by a lot of e-commerce and high scalable sites and uh, even uh, platforms like uh, hotstar for content delivery for of course because um, when you are delivering the video content in this case it's mostly the video uh, streams uh, you need to reach out to uh, millions of people uh, in as per this example itself hotstar and uh, those millions of users can be uh, spread across the globe and uh, you reduce the loads on your uh, front end and the infrastructure the back end infrastructure and you start leveraging content delivery uh, which can be very very effective uh, very cost effective optimizing your infrastructure itself and it can help you scale itself right this can also lead to some downtimes and issues because if content delivery network is down you could be in trouble with your backend infrastructure as well 
So uh, these are the skills you should definitely know about, like cloud containers, uh, something like CDN uh, and one of the CI/CD platforms. For secret management, Vault has become a very important uh, uh, tool uh, that almost every organization uses. For cloud provisioner, uh, provisioning, Terraform is emerging as the number one tool today, right? So that's uh, something you should definitely pick up as well. And uh, if you want to get started with um, your DevOps journey, definitely check out schooloftowers.com and uh, the, the programs and the memberships that we have uh, available with us. Now, uh, in addition to these uh, DevOps practices, um, you know, you would hear about uh, a lot of interesting SRE practices. In case of, uh, uh, Debo you know, Hotstar, by the way, they have, um, uh, it looks like they have a DevOps team and they have definitely have the position called as DevOps engineers, etc. So for the people and the thought leaders who have been preaching about, oh, there is no DevOps teams and there are no DevOps uh, uh, as a role, um, you may want to think twice about it, right? So because you need to check, do the reality check there. Um, and uh, this is what we've been preaching about. So there is uh, a real position uh, by name DevOps engineers. And now we also have SREs. Now, um, what is also happening is organizations just branding their DevOps teams as SRE, but that's something I am against for sure, because uh, SRE is more than uh, what we do with DevOps, with optimizing workflows and, you know, implementing uh, these technologies, etc. And we go beyond that. And uh, fundamentally, SRE would make sense when you have a site with millions of customers and, you know, at a really large scale is what we are talking about. Definitely. Even if you don't have millions, but uh, it's uh, up to certain scale, it should be there, right? So we're talking about site reliability engineering. And when you talk about the scale, uh, we need to talk about performance engineering, setting up observability. That is when you can start implementing uh, practices such as uh, error budgets and SLOs, SLAs, SLIs internally, and that could definitely help you. Now, uh, Hotstar, uh, I don't see those practices being talked about, but definitely they talk about a lot of interesting practices, which I would categorize as SRE practices. And that would include observability. Of course, they have this whole monitoring system. They have their own infra uh, dashboard, uh, something, a custom built infra dashboard. That's for the visibility, observability. Uh, they would be using, of course, all this met, uh, auto scaling and ladder based policies are all impossible without setting up a proper observability system. They do talk about logging and setting up standardization about it. So there's definitely there is observability systems involved. Uh, they also do performance testing to find the breaking points and the choke points of uh, their applications. Uh, there's a lot of chaos engineering involved. Um, they also have a concept of game day where they launch uh, really large scale load testing so uh, that you know, the load test servers itself. So they launch it in the numbers in thousands of uh, servers. And uh, those are really large serv scale servers. So they're trying to simulate, uh, they have, uh, you know, come up with the pattern. So they use ML machine learning. Um, and they, they basically are trying to simulate, they have the data from their previous events, like the, uh, you know, some important matches, like uh, what happened last week. And they try to simulate the same situation. And, uh, you know, they know their user journey, and they've scripted that user journey and uh, that is what they are trying to uh, simulate during the game day and introduce chaos um, introduce uh, do the performance testing and load testing with uh, those simulated uh, uh, they use a purely python based uh, you know uh, script to do the performance testing etc and they also do the chaos engineering um, they don't talk about a specific tool for it there are useful tools available today uh, in the world of chaos engineering but what they are talking about is just python scripts to introduce the chaos and maybe knock off uh, this rule or that route table or, you know, um, um, introduce a fault and see how their systems behave. And based on that, uh, try, trying to find the issues and uh, a lot of issues related to, uh, let's say, when it comes to their load testing and chaos, um, uh, they're trying to predict the issues proactively. Um, uh, or find the issues proactively and either you solve it or you introduce uh, strategies to mitigate or you know minimize the impact of those issues not everything can be solved uh, so um, 
in terms of hotstar they have uh, certain issues like with push notifications going out meaning these are the marketing campaigns and when whenever there's a marketing campaign uh, there's an unpredictable load which will follow so that is something that they test against um, uh, in their load test possibly um, they had issues with the delayed scale up i think that's where containers might saw might have solved the problems uh, they still have a problem with the tsunami traffic where you know um, there are spikes of traffics like these uh, let's say during an important match uh, uh, a very popular player like uh, ms dhoni in uh, who's very popular cricketer in india um and in the world of cricket in general uh, whenever he's batting um the you know uh, the load will go up because there'll be a lot of viewers who will just come and come onto the platform or some important uh, events happen some interesting uh, turn off the events in the match uh, will you know generate a spike of load and let's say that um, cricket of the batsman gets out uh, there's suddenly drop in the traffic as well so they call it as a tsunami traffic and uh, it's difficult to predict um, um, you know uh, always and uh, when the traffic goes down spikes down as well so people start using different features of the platform and then it increases the load unpredictably on the other components of the platform as well so they have to be ready with that uh, that's when they talk about uh, knowing your user journey so that you can predict and uh, simulate what is going to happen when certain events happen and uh, based on that you learn and improve and make your system more reliable it's an iterative process because um, they've been doing it over years it's not like one uh, quick month and they have the system built uh, it's it's a learning um, that you feed in and there's a feedback loop and you keep on improving iteratively and you uh, build a system which is more reliable iteratively always uh, and uh, yeah there are other issues like increase in the latency between uh, certain services and uh, it could also be something unpredictable like um, that you don't have control over like network failure cloud issues um, content delivery network issues which is a very important component of this infrastructure now how do you uh, handle those issues is where you do the game days and simulate and uh, do uh, you know uh, try to come up with your learnings and if you cannot solve the issues not all the issues can be solved uh, you have to then press the panic button so uh, hotstar has implemented this panic mode uh, for different services let's say for login service for payment service because what can happen is you don't want uh, to you know impact the user experience let's say user is watching uh, users are watching match match and if uh, let's say a payment gateway or a login process is uh, down uh, and that can impact the viewing experience so they uh, have this panic button where uh, they'll focus on its critical services turn off um, non-essential services uh, do the graceful degradation where they would bypass uh, the system which is failing and just let users view the uh, let's say view the game for a few minutes until that system is up and then they bring it up and you know uh, bring it back into action and so on so there are a lot of interesting learnings from hotstar about how they built um, the system to scale uh, how did they make it so reliable and um, you know there are a lot of important takeaways from it as well well i hope you found this insightful and um, if you want to get started with your DevOps journey, you could get started with my introductory course on, uh, in, you know, DevOps and SRE, which is available for free. And if you want to watch more of uh, this content, uh, definitely let me know and uh, definitely like and share and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see you in another video with some more interesting content. Bye bye.